Buy. Buy, I tell you. Buy every copy you can. Telekinesis is a reserve list card that's also popper legal. As soon as a Magic Pro or content creator spotlights it in a deck, it's sure to shoot through the roof and then we'll have every copy. What do you mean it's more complicated than that? I don't care. Just buy them all and ooh, I gotta go. A brand new Magic the Gathering set is upon us. So you know what that means. It's time to stay huddled indoors, alone, spending our money on meme stocks to stick it to Wall Street by giving them money. Yes, I know it's more complicated than that. Don't make a comment. I don't care. I don't care. Just let me get to the video. But don't throw away all your money on goofy things like Dogecoin, which I learned this week is based on a dog who likes to wear sunglasses. Because one of the most questionable of meme investments is still going strong. That's right, it's packs of Magic the Gathering. If you do still support your local game store, you might walk away with one of these, a Kaldheim promo pack or foil Kaldheim promo pack. What's in a promo pack? I, I honestly have no idea. I, I didn't see like an announcement about what's in these and maybe there was a tweet and I missed it because other things were like, something was just f taking up my feed and I'm not on Twitter really anymore anyway, so I don't really know what's in these. But that's not a problem because promo packs have been a staple of the local game store for years and I've been saving them, all of them. So today I'm going to open them, all of them, looking through these old promo packs and based upon their contents, I will try and make a reasonable guess as to what is in these Kaldheim packs. What's in them? I don't know. Let's open other things, then guess, then open them and find out. Okay, so the far end of my collection of these is Ixalan where they had these special promo packs that were offered in addition to the regular buy a box promo packs and standard showdown packs. And if you think it's confusing to have two different buy a box promo packs offered for the same set in addition to another promo pack, each with wildly different contents, you're right, it is confusing. But don't worry, the Wizards of the Coast website will help me navigate. Oh, it's the links broken. Well, these particular promo packs contained four rare or mythics from standard legal sets. Four, wow. Two foils of any rarity from standard legal sets, as well as two foil Rebecca Gay lands, and one exclusive alternate art transform land from Ixalan. Transform lands were not just alternate art, but alternate art that you could put the backs together and it forms one giant image. That image being a map of Ixalan. It's so cool. I love them so much. Remember, these packs are different from the regular buy a box promo pack that you could also get if you bought a box, and that one contained the exact same breakdown, except instead of the insanely cool alternate art dual faced foil land, you got a 30 cent foil Burning Suns avatar. These packs were amazing, but most people didn't even know they existed because, well, it was confusing.
How'd I end up with three of these? I don't remember, but I saved them all these years, and now here we are, and they're really cool. What about those standard showdown packs? Well, for Ixalan, they would contain two rare mythic cards from a currently legal standard set, a foil basic land with art by Rebecca Gay, and a foil card of any rarity from a currently legal standard set. Now, I don't have one of those to open, but just a few sets later, we had War of the Spark, and I do have one of those to open, and they contain the same breakdown, with the change being that instead of a foil Rebecca Gay land, you got one of those foil Ravnica guild lands, which is, again, really cool. After War of the Sparks, standard showdown packs were replaced with promo packs, which were intended as a more generic prize pack that you could use anywhere, from standard showdown to Friday Night Magic to random prizes at Commander Night. This is also where we started seeing foil and non-foil versions, a trend that continues to today. I honestly find that very frustrating because the foil versions tend to go, and in higher numbers, to the bigger, more successful stores. And that means that your small local game store gets worse prize support. And so prize savvy customers might seek out the larger, more successful store and abandon the smaller game den. I really wish they would just make one prize pack, make it really good, and give it to everyone based upon their attendance needs. The contents also shifted dramatically, and I would say more confusingly here. The promo packs now had four slots, and within those slots there were different chances at different things. So slot one was a promo stamped rare mythic from Corset 2020. Slot two has a 75% chance that it'll be another promo stamped rare mythic from a curated list of cards that again, I can't access because the links are down, so who knows what could have been on that, or a 25% chance that slot two will be a Japanese alternate art planeswalker from War of the Spark. Slot three has a promo stamped alternate art basic land, and then slot four, you get one of five M20 cards in the dark alternate frame that FNM promos had shifted to. Alright, here we are at Theros Beyond Death. I've got a lot of these, we'll, we'll go through them. But the contents here really started shifting wildly. Now it is that slot one still can have any rare mythic from Theros Beyond with that special Planeswalker symbol stamp, but slot two would be a rare mythic from a curated list from cards from anywhere, from standard, modern, or even commander formats. This gets confusing, you don't know what you're getting. And slot three will be one of five Theros Beyond Death, common or uncommons, in that FNM promo frame. Or no, wait, I think they're just commons. I don't know, The again, links are broken, or I couldn't find the right one. Slot four now only has a code card that redeems for one Theros Beyond Death booster pack on Magic Arena. Hey, these code cards still work. If you enter the code, or you're the first to enter the code, you, you get the pack, so have at it. Someone gets it. I have not redeemed these.
Theros also had weird changes to its buy a box pack. Now, instead of getting all those rares, you get one rare like you used to get, but it's in a little booster pack thing here. It's a foil alternate art Athros, which I do not believe was even in the regular set, but it was standard legal. And then a non-foil land, which uh, they had one of these in every pack. So it's, it's not that great. It should have been a foil full art or even better, a foil alternate art like they did in Ravnica. I really like the Atheros. Uh, I don't like how confusing it gets and also just it just changes every set. It's like slightly different rules it feels like. And speaking of slightly different rules, here's a funny thing that happened to me when filming. I was going to open up the buy a box pack for Ikoria, which I have here. Out of all the Ikoria boxes that I bought, I only got one promo pack. Every store was out of them. And I think I know why, because when I opened this, ups, the store wasn't supposed to give one to each customer. They had one with a whole bunch of cards in it for a whole bunch of different customers. Oh no. So what happened here is pretty obvious. Wizards is giving out little promo packs for the, the buy a box promo and it's one card in each pack and you're supposed to give one pack out to each customer and then they just change it. And one pack has all those cards in it. And so the store was like, oh, here you go. Or, and that's understandable. That's an understandable mistake. It also explains why for Coria, every store I went to and I was buying boxes as, hey, buy a box promo. Oh, we're all out of the buy box. Yeah, I know why you're all out of the buy a box promos because you made a very reasonable mistake. All these shifting contents lead to added confusion. And I'm not against Wizards of the Coast trying new things. And I'm certainly not against them offering more things to us, but it seems like every set, something's getting changed and it doesn't stick, it doesn't last, and I wish we had a little bit more of a consistency so that we didn't have confusion like this, but there you go. What's even more confusing is that for Kaldheim, the buy box promo is Realm Walker. It's really cool, actually, but it's just Realm Walker. It's not in a pack. That's probably smart. And it's also available in the set, so it isn't exclusive. So that's actually not confusing so much as great. I hope they stick with it. We don't have a buy box topper for this set, which we did in the last set, and we had in the Ikoria set, but not in the Ravnica. Oh my goodness, it just makes my head spin. Realm Walker's a great include. It was one of the top cards that I predicted to have modern relevance in my best of modern video. And speaking of box toppers, Zendikar Rising came with box toppers, which was the greatest thing. It meant if you bought a box, you got a chance at one of 30 different, oh, look, yeah. Great. It's amazing to me that these are not more heavily pursued. And really disappointing to me that they didn't continue them. I really wish that Commander Legends had had box toppers. I really wish that Kaldheim had box toppers. I, I think the box topper is great. I do know that they get damaged inside the box sometimes. They can work on that. They can work on solving that problem. But the idea of you get the promo in the box so you don't accidentally have store owners giving away a pack with all the promos or running out of them, it's such an incentive to buy a full box. I wish it continued. All right, so I wanna guess as to what's in these. Let's look at the promo packs from the most recent set, Zendikar Rising, speaking of box toppers. So for the Zendikar Rising promo packs, you got a rare mythic card, but it couldn't be a modal dual faced card, which is disappointing because we've got modal dual faced cards in Kaldheim too. So does that mean I can't get them here? Probably not. They also have a curated list of rare mythics, which apparently includes modern commander. I have no idea what's on that list and I have no idea where to find it. And I don't care enough to dig around for it. And that's not a good thing. You could also get a uh, dark frame, common or uncommon from Zendikar Rising. I don't really care about that either. I really want the alternate art, alternate frames on the rares, but they're not giving that to us because it's extra work, I guess. I don't know. And an arena code, have at it. I'm gonna put all my money on guessing that it's no changes. Uh, a rare or mythic from Kaldheim and not one of the dual-faced cards. A rare or mythic from a list that we have no idea what that is. I'm getting really tired of the list and it's only been one set that we've had that with set boosters, but 
It's just so confusing and I don't know what I'm getting. There's probably gonna be a common or uncommon in that, that promo frame, but with the same art, they don't wanna commission extra art, and an arena code. I'm guessing three cards, two of them rare mythics, an arena code. I have no idea. Let's find out. Wow, looks like I was right. I actually filmed that before I've opened the packs just to match with whichever outcome it was because I have to move my camera and lighting to open the packs. So this professor right here doesn't know if I was right or wrong, but it'll, it'll all sync up and post. Wow, looks like I was right. Wow, looks like I was wrong. At the end of the day, the point of this video is that as I looked at that big stack of promo packs and realized I had no idea what any of them contained, I had to look up all that information, it was frustrating, and I wouldn't even be surprised if I got some of it wrong, that these constant changes, and especially the stuff where slot one can have a 75% chance or a 25% chance. You're seeing that in the, the set boosters where slots, th cards three, four, and five, and also in the collector boosters, it makes it so you never know really what you might get, and it makes it really hard to forget what old stuff had. And I wish that we could start streamlining that more. Again, I am not against experimenting. I'm not against changing something, especially if it's changing it for the better, like giving us more cards, not, not less. But I am against it being convoluted and confusing. I do think it hurts the product when your customers don't know what's in it. It used to be that you could set your clock by what Wizards of the Coast did and what was in Magic the Gathering packs. And now it's like, I don't know, something, it's from the list. I don't know what could be on the list of the call time cards or what was on the list from Theros and if there was changes. And I don't think that's a good thing. So that was the point of this video. Well, actually the point of the video was, was I had the big stack of promo cards and I said, I should just open these because I want to see what's in them. And then I thought I should monetize my opening it so that I could see what was in them. And so I did that and I tried to make it have a point. I hope you enjoyed it.